Um, I think you've come to expect from the uh, Cape Cod Symphony um, both the beautiful traditional, uh, but also the innovative. And uh, what we're presenting today, I think, is a perfect example of uh, that innovation that we love to do. And uh, who better to represent uh, our innovative spirit uh, than uh, our uh, artistic director, Zhang Ho Pak, who uh, is uh, very excited to tell you all about this competition. Zhang Ho. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As Jerry said, the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra's ultimate goal is to be one of the most preeminent orchestras in the country. And that means doing things differently. It means creating programs that capture the imagination, not only of the people who love classical music, but especially people who have no idea what classical music is about. So to create something dramatic, something unique, is challenging. But we think we've come up with the right idea. It's called the New England Concerto Competition. And the official title is called The Soloist. And we're seeking a soloist of extraordinary quality, but in an unusual way. First off, there is no age limit. I appreciate that more and more every day myself. Most competitions have an age limit, 25, 30. And to me, that seems like a crime, because as we all mature, we gain more insight more sophistication in our perception of life, and of course, music as well. I have many instances where some of the greatest musicians played their finest performances well into their 70s and 80s. Horowitz is one idea, one person who comes to mind who played brilliantly all the way to the end of his career. Something important to say. So it seems like a shame to not give that opportunity to someone who has that kind of maturity. The second thing is that in this competition, there are no judges at the finals. Now, that's very unusual. Even American Idol has some kind of coloration influence of a panel of judges who, make, who try to influence viewers. But in this case, only the audience will vote at the final competition. It will be two evenings, Saturday evening and Sunday afternoon. And at the end of that Sunday afternoon, the votes will be tallied and the winner will be announced. And by the way, the winners will be given a cash prize, which is fairly ambitious for a first-time competition. But I believe the first prize winner will receive $3,000? $3,500. And then slightly less for the other winners as well. And let me back up and say that the finals will be three finalists chosen. And they can be of any instrument. That's another thing unique about this competition. They can be of any instrument as long as they're performing classical music. So that doesn't only mean the traditional instruments like violin and piano, or cello, or perhaps clarinet and flute and trumpet, et cetera, et cetera. But it could also mean a voice, a soprano, a tenor, a bass, or maybe perhaps even a guitar, a banjo, a kazoo, if they're playing classical music. So it's really a wide, wide field for people who are talented. Um, there will be a semifinal round of a select group of people uh, of a couple of months prior of eight semifinalists. And that will be in front of a select group of judges, but also via the internet. People will be able to go online, and this is what's so wonderful about this, they'll be empowered uh, via YouTube or some other postings, and they'll be able to take a look at these semifinalists themselves and vote who should move on to the semifinals. So that vote will be a combination of those judges sitting there as well as online voting. What the region in which we're trying to cover here is not the entire country. Now, we wanted to give this opportunity to the, the region that we think we serve, which is New England. And so anyone living within the New England region, the states of New England, can participate. So even if they're a student living away, uh, but if their home resident, their permanent resident is within New England, they can, they can submit their application. And that consists of specific information, but also online video posting as well. Uh, the purpose behind this competition is to spark the imagination of anyone who has had a dream, anyone who at one point may have had the impossible notion that maybe they could someday be a soloist. 
that they can step up in front of a large audience and in front of a wonderful symphony orchestra and realize their dream. It could be someone, it could be a housewife in Sandwich, or it could be a truck driver from Newton. Um, it could be someone who at one point had the ability, but then had to shelve that dream, maybe out of fear, maybe out of family obligation, maybe out of parental pressure, economic pressure, but maybe still has that talent and that ability and has kept that ability throughout the years, hidden away, ready to be unleashed today or this next season. So we're very, very excited about this, uh, this competition. We think it's unique on, on, the, on those levels that we've talked about. No other competition has these unique qualities. We think that it'll put Cape Cod Symphony even further on the map as being one of the most innovative and the most courageous orchestras in the country. Thank you. Oh, I'd like to introduce now uh, someone who's directly connected to this mission of the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra being more than just an orchestra. As you know, one of the most exciting developments of the symphony over the last several years is the marriage between the Cape Cod Conservatory and the symphony. And what this has meant is that the symphony is more than just a delivery device of incredible beauty and quality but it also means that we're able to reach all the children and adults in the Cape Cod community and allow them the opportunity to participate in the arts, not only in music, but in the visual arts, the performing arts as well. So to talk a little bit about the Cape Cod's conservatory's perspective on all this is our managing director, Stephanie Weaver. Stephanie? Thank you. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about what it means to be a performing artist and what it takes, how that begins, how is, how is a performing artist born. Um, we have hundreds and hundreds of them hopeful artists at the conservatory right now, but how does that all begin? And personally, I'm trained as a, a classical pianist. It begins at a very young age. I think about it, I think about it a lot uh, in, in similar terms to a, a professional athlete, what a professional athlete must go, to, go through to become that star, to, be, to get that position, to be a quarterback in the NFL. It starts very young. It starts with talent. It starts with passion. It starts with hundreds and thousands and millions of hours of hard, hard work for every minute a musician, an artist is on stage, there are hundreds, thousands of hours of practice and hard work, technique, etudes, repertoire, all of that. It can be very all-consuming, very um, all-encompassing, and very, very competitive. We, we all start out as musicians um, when we go to school, when we go to a conservatory, hoping that we'll be that one. We'll be that one in front of the orchestra. But the reality is less than 1% of us actually get there. But we all have that dream. It's so, so competitive. And, and even now, things are, are even more competitive than ever. And what really makes that star? What, what really helps them to stand out? And what's so incredible about this competition, what's so innovative about the way we're doing it? First of all, no judges. This will be judged by you, by the audience, so that key, key piece, the artist must connect and communicate with you to really, really win that competition. It's not just technique. There are so many people that have beautiful technique. It's not just musicianship. So many of us have that. It's that communication, that power to move the audience. So that, that is the first thing. The fact that this is ageless and that the, the artists are not professionals is also incredible. There are some wonderful stories of, of musicians and artists who um, followed another path and then had this dream and somehow got a big break and ended up in, you know, on the concert stage. Uh, one of my favorite examples is, is a local favorite, John Nakamatsu, who's played with the symphony, uh, who leads the Cape Cod uh, Chamber Music Festival, who was a high school German teacher and won the Van Cliburn competition in 1997 just out of the blue, which is just <coughs> incredible. So this, this is an opportunity for people who may have this dream, but they may be doctors, they may be lawyers, they may be teachers, um, that this will give them the opportunity to get on stage. Um, so the conservatory is really involved in supporting and opening doors for 
musicians of all ages, all stages, all instruments. We also have a scholarship competition that's ongoing every year to help support those students. These will, these funds will support students who may not have had the opportunity. That's another thing. The commitment is not only time, it's money, it's financial. These students need support all ages. So that's that's the role that the conservatory will play in this competition, opening doors, helping to support the community and providing those opportunities for the students. So, thank you. Um, I think that this is an opportunity for Q&A for questions from uh, from our audience. And we have a <laughs> mic right here. Anyone? In addition to the uh, cash prize, after that, is there any opportunity for that, that person, whoever that may be, to uh, be involved with the symphony or in any way after that? Or will they be given any type of uh, direction as to where they should go after winning a competition like this? Yeah, that's a very good question. There, there definitely is an opportunity. And uh, perhaps I'll let uh, uh, Jung Ho Pak uh, respond to that. Yes, I think there is a, a possibility. I mean, obviously, we expect that the person to be extraordinary because we have such a wide regional area that there's got to be someone who's just phenomenal. Um, but we reserve the right to invite them back, and we hope to do that um, for a future performance, too. And I think our audience would want that as well. They chose the winner that they would want to see them perform a full concerto. And, and this is an opportunity to tell you a little bit of how it's going to work at the finals. Each person will be tasked to perform a single movement or a short, sing, uh, a short contained movement uh, of about maybe 10 to 15 minutes long. So they will perform back to back on the first half of a concert. And then the audience will vote during the intermission process. And if they were, uh, in, in, in the high likelihood that they were actually to come back to perform with a the symphony, they would perform a full concerto, not a single movement, but a full three movement concerto. And so that's, that's something. And you know, and one other thing that I, I forgot to mention, which we were alluding to, is that this is for amateurs. So someone who's already on the circuit and performing and giving recitals and concerts and making their livelihood primarily out of uh, being a classical musician is not qualified for this competition. They're not eligible. We're looking for someone who really is an amateur, who's playing music out of the love for it, but has a primary source of income. So you know, trying to level the playing field as much as possible. Yeah, and uh, Zhang Ho, for a, uh, if, if it's going to be voice, then uh, uh, what's the expectation there for the performance? That, uh, that's great. If, if they're a vocalist, obviously they need to perform something classical. That could be something from an opera, or it could be an, another song setting. It uh, doesn't have to be from an opera, but as long as it's with, with an orchestra, that's the most important thing. But uh, also, if someone is making a living performing music in another field, that's OK, too. So if they're a vocalist in a country western band, they can participate in this competition quite, quite wonderfully. I, I, would, I would love to see that kind of surprise uh, participation. And, and for us, it's not just the performance that's really the hook in all this. We think the most compelling aspect of this competition is the story of the competitors. You know, where are they from? What, what did they have to sacrifice in order to, to not become a professional musician? How hard did they have to work to maintain these skills? We think that's going to be the other half of the story for this competition. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a great point. And the other um, uh, part of the definition of amateur is that, uh, yeah, we do expect them to be very much involved with music. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be able to rise to this opportunity. Uh, but they can uh, earn no more than 50 percent uh, of their income from uh, being in music. So uh, if it's more than that, then we're going to uh, categorize them as professionals. And uh, so that's one way to draw that line. More questions? I'll just do a quick follow-up. Could you address uh, some of the challenges that artists in the classical field maybe are facing right now to have a break like this? How difficult is it to, to get a break like this right now in, in the classical field? Good, good question. John, you want to take that? Certainly. It's 
extremely difficult, as Stephanie was alluding to. Uh, I, I would rather buy a, a lottery ticket than uh, to try to anticipate whether I'm going to have a soloist career. It's very, very, very difficult. Um, and, and, and Stephanie put it so beautifully. It's not just because you go to a major conservatory. It's not just if you practice, practice, practice and get to Carnegie Hall. It, it, there's something else, something very unique. It has to do with a spark and a chemistry and a je ne sais quoi that an audience can feel. And that sometimes a judge, a distinguished judge, a distinguished musician themselves can't necessarily predict. It's the funniest thing, that, that how uh, the ability for someone on stage to touch someone's heart and to grab their soul is, is unpredictable. And so uh, that itself does not define whether or not someone's going to be a soloist. But then if you just look at the field of classical music and the stress that it's under in terms of not being presented in schools, and this is why the conservatory is so key in all this, Classical music is not pervasive like it was in the 1950s. And so for a person to make it in a field that is becoming more and more marginalized, and hopefully with this competition, we're help pu helping pushing back those walls, uh, the, de the decision to be a classical musician is not just a, a career choice, it's a monetary choice as well. Can you piece together enough engagements to put, to put food on the table, to pay the rent, and to send your kid to college. Those are very real pressures. So even if you have all the ability, do you have the business and the wherewithal to succeed at that? So it's extremely difficult. I would, I would say, you know, probably at any given point of, of any musician in a conservatory, any given year of, of, a, of a class of, let's say, 300, 400 musicians in a specific class, one musician would be lucky in any given year to become a successful long-term soloist. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to add anything to that? Um, just to that, um, as Jung Ho said, the, the world is changing, and this competition is, is proof that classical musicians can exist in different ways than previously. Um, practicing and, and the, the commitment, the time commitment has has often defined a person and a person's life. Uh, but I think now the person's life experiences are defining them as an artist and as a musician. So things are changing and evolving and this competition is, is a great example of that. Yeah. Other questions? Well, uh, and, and just one thing comes to mind. Yesterday in the discussion that you had with uh, Irina um, Marisciano, who is going to be our soloist uh, for this weekend's uh, performances, she was asked a very similar question uh, that, that, like the one you just asked. And she said that it, it's very interesting right now in the, um, in, in the um, uh, conservatories, uh, whereas it might have been just training to become a soloist or a a conductor or a, uh, uh, a recording artist or something like that, uh, that now they focus on all those things and teaching their students every part of being a musician. So you can play in a chamber group, in an orchestra, become a uh, performing soloist and so on. Because there are so many avenues now that, uh, that, are, that are out there and you have to take advantage of each one. Because not one of them is guaranteed. Do you want to add to that? Yes. Um, I, I just want a practical note, too, for anyone watching this and, and for uh, the practicality of application. Uh, we, we want to encourage people to apply as soon as possible right now. If they want information about the details, the rules and regulations about the competition, they should go to our website, capesymphony.org. That's capesymphony, one word, dot O-R-G. And there they can, uh, I believe, fill the application online, or is it downloadable and published? Yeah downloadable via PDF, and then you can um, submit that and upload your video as well. The, uh, the, the video, is, it's not a long video. It doesn't have to be professionally done. It could be, although the better the quality, the better chance you have of being reviewed accurately. Uh, and then that, that process will take us through into the fall. The deadline is, I believe, somewhere uh, for submissions for October. October. October, and then we will review those and announce them, I think, at the end of October, who's, who's going to participate in the semifinals. We'll post those semifinal video so people will be able to go online and begin that voting process. And then we will hold the semifinals uh, in the new year. In February. In February. Uh, and that, again, is with the judges and with accumulation of the online voting. 
And yes, we expect people to ask their friends and family and to stack the deck as much as possible. And that's part, we, we want this competition to be viral. We want the tweeting and the Facebook and the, the people to participate. That's part of the democracy and excitement of this. I got some of this idea through the YouTube video, the symphony, the symphony that was created through YouTube and all those submissions as well. And then after the February competition, we will announce the finalists who will participate in our May concert, the final concert of the season. And uh, so there's this kind of crescendo that's going to be building throughout the season. Right. Great. Uh, we have a question. Yes? Well, we're, I would say, probably in the hundreds. Oh, I, I would hope in the, in the thousands. Well, yeah. I, I mean, this is, this is why we've, we've made it completely open. It's not just you know, violin or not just cello. We, we had a, a completely wide open door so that uh, we, you know, again, that no one would feel excluded, that it's a, someone would, would feel empowered and emboldened. I, I, I hope it's in the thousands. <laughs> yes. You've mentioned a few times that you you seem to have some level of excitement about the fact that it won't be one of the it's well it's possible that it won't be one of the standard concertos that's been performed many times that it could be a tuba or a marimba concerto or something like that. Do you and the the community of musicians in the symphony you must have a level of excitement about that the possibility that it could could be anything that you end up performing. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I hope, I actually, in, the, in my heart of hearts, that it is something unusual mm -hmm. um, or, or something that, or, or a piece of music that isn't performed so often. That would be great. In fact, probably it would be to the advantage of that person participating because everyone knows the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. To compete with something that is so well-worn, it'd be kind of like, uh, you know, um, doing a recreation of Star Wars. I mean, it would be, you'd be compared to something else. And so it would, be, it would probably behoove the person to be a little bit different to, uh, and, and to choose an instrument uh, if they have that instrument in their capability to, to, to enter. They, they would stick out. They'd be more memorable that mm -hmm. way. Thank you. That, uh, <coughs> that's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? No. Well, in that case, I think we have to say we thank you very much uh, all for coming. We, uh, we hope you'll get this news out uh, quickly and often. Uh, and uh, I think it's, uh, there's going to be a lot of news coming throughout the year, and we'll certainly uh, be back to you uh, as, as, as time goes by. Uh, one thing, finally, for all of you that have come, <clears throat> we'd like to offer you uh, a ticket to this weekend's uh, concert so you can see a soloist, uh, Irina Marishanu, who's doing some uh, absolutely wonderful violin concerti. Uh, and uh, so just see me after the, uh, after the news conference here. Thank you very much. <laughs>